In this tutorial, I'll be showing you the Divi Advanced Design Settings and Custom CSS Settings that are available for all modules, rows, and sections uh, built with the Divi Builder. So, to make things a little more clear, let's dive into the Divi Builder so I can show you what I'm talking about. Here's a page that I built with Divi. I'm going to edit the page and bring up the Divi Builder so we can dive into some of these settings. So, whenever you edit a module or add a new module, for example, here's a blurb module, so I'm going to click the settings icon to bring up the settings. You're going to be greeted with three tabs, general settings, advanced design settings, and custom CSS settings. Now our general philosophy is that everything you need to use the Divi module and to use it well is in the general settings. But if you'd like a little more control and you really want to put some work into customizing um, the, the module, you can use the advanced design settings which have just about everything you could ever need um, to customize the appearance of that module. Anything you can do with CSS, you can pretty much do with the advanced design settings. That being said, if you'd rather not use our custom controls that we have here in the advanced design settings tab, well then you can use the custom CSS tab instead and just type in your own uh, CSS if you happen to be a web, a web developer. Now in the custom CSS tab, we break down all the different elements of the module. So for example, the blur module here, you can apply a CSS to the main you know, div. You can create a pseudo element after the div. You can you know, apply a CSS to the blurb image, the blurb title, the blurb content, all individually. And you can do it all for the individual module on the individual page. And that saves you a lot of time if you really, you know, if you really, you know, had to customize the appearance of one module in, on one page and you don't want to create a whole child theme just to do that. This is a whole lot easier and easier to manage as well. So. Let's um, start off by taking a look at the advanced design settings. And to do that, first I'm going to take another look at our page so we can see kind of our starting point. And then I'm going to uh, dive into the advanced design settings, kind of go over what, what each of them do, and um, also how to use them together to create some kind of unique effects. So here's um, our two rows of blurbs, um, just standard blurbs, not customized, the design that is. And so let's. Um, open up the advanced design settings for our first blurb and take a look at what we have. Now the advanced design settings are going to be different for every single module because there's different elements in each, mod in each module, but um, generally the same types of options are available for all modules. So you're going to see you know, width options, sizing options, you're going to see a, a slew of options for text including you know, header font size, font styles, um, letter spacing, line height, <coughs> background colors, um, custom fonts, all the kind of stuff you know, that you'd ever want to change is, is going to be available. But um, you know, different collections of those types of settings are going to be available uh, with each different module. So in this uh, blurb module in particular, we have um, a good <coughs> collection of settings here. So I'm going to go through one by one and kind of explain what they do. And then you can kind of like extrapolate that um, and, and how they would apply to other modules as well. But first we have an image max width. So this module happens to have an image in it if you so choose to upload one. And um, if you'd like to give that image a max width, you can apply it here. So if for whatever reason, you know, you, you let's say you create a blurb and you put a pretty large image in there and you like the way it looks in a, um, you know, one half column. But then as the site breaks down to mobile and everything kind of gets forced into one column, you don't like how big that image gets and so you want to apply a max width to it. In which case you just say, <coughs> you know, type in a max width here and then the image will never get bigger than that. Next up is the use um, icon font size. So you can choose to apply a, a custom icon font size to the icon in your blurb. You can adjust the header fonts. So you can choose from do dozens of Google fonts here to apply to the header within the blurb. And you can adjust the font styles as, as well, making them bold or italic. And if at any time um, you want to reset back to default, just click this reset icon and it's going to wipe all the settings. And you can also <coughs> um, wipe the whole design settings tab by clicking this reset button up here. And that's just going to uh, clear everything out. So if you've kind of like, you know, made a mess of things and you want a clean slate, just go up here and click that reset button. And then you can start from scratch. So we also have a header font size. You can adjust the, the size of the title in your blurb. You can adjust the color um, of the header font. You can adjust the letter spacing, so the spacing between each letter in the header. You can adjust the line height. 
And you can do all those things for the body font as well. Adjust the font, style, size, color, spacing, and line height. Finally, we have a background color. So this can apply a background color to the blurb. Um, you can apply a background image. <coughs> you can choose to put a border around it. And you can add custom margin and padding. And so let's uh, kind of play with a little bit of these uh, settings. So I'm going to increase the font size a bit. And I'm going to make it bold. And I'm going to change the actual font to a different font. And I'm going to change the icon size a bit as well. Let's make it a little larger. <coughs> and maybe increase the letter spacing slightly. And then under my general settings, I'm going to change this to change this up a little bit. I'm going to put the icon on top. And I'm going to make the text orientation center and save. So we've um, kind of played with some advanced design settings there, kind of increasing the sizes. Uh, <coughs> of the color of the uh, fonts as well as the font itself. So you can see we've already changed this blurb quite a bit by making this text bold, by making it a little bit larger, um, and changing the font. So let's take it a bit further. Let's go back to the advanced design settings. And this time I'm going to try applying a background color. So I'm going to put a background color on this blurb, which usually has no background color. So this is a good example where you can really completely change um, kind of what a module can be used for. So blurbs have never had background colors before. There's no background color in the general settings. This is only, only available in the advanced design settings. And the reason we separate some of these things is because we want to make it clear that once you enter the, the advanced design settings, then you kind of, um, I guess the good way to say it is great power comes with great responsibility. You have a lot of power here, but you also have a lot of power to mess up kind of the design. So you need to um, like, you know, adjust these things with care, I would say. So, and this is a good example of kind of when you need to think about your choice. Um, so here's a blurb where you have no background color, and now we're going to apply a background color to it. And so that choice is going to have a few consequences that we're going to have to adjust other settings to kind of like uh, go along with that choice. So first of all, we've added a background color it's made our text not visible, which means we're also going to need to go into those advanced design settings and make this text a different color, the blurb icon as well. And another thing I don't really like is that there's no space between the edge of this uh, module, the, the box, and the content within it. But luckily, all these things you can control in the advanced design settings. So that, that's the beauty of these settings. There's really nothing you can't do. And so that's exactly what I am going to do. I'm going to change the color of the title and change it to white so it looks great on top of that purple. And then I'm going to change the body color as well <coughs> to white. And then I'm going to add some padding. So I want to put some space between the edge of the box and the, co and the content within it. And to do that, I'm just going to add some custom padding uh, value here in pixels. And then I'm going to change the icon color to white. And with just a few simple clicks, we are going to completely transform this blurb into something entirely different. So it's become this block element. We've added padding around the edges so that um, there's you know, room for this text to breathe inside of the block. We've changed the color to white, which shows up much better on top of the purple, and really just created a kind of a whole new element out of this blurb using those advanced design settings. And so that's an example of. Um, how you can use the advanced design settings to, to really give your website a completely different look than you'd ever um, than like was ever possible before we introduced these settings. And so in this case, I might want to delete my other blurbs, duplicate this this one. In fact, as I looked at that, I kind of want to reduce the padding a bit. It was a little bit um, tight on the inside, so let's change this to 70 pixels instead of 100. Then I'm going to duplicate this and put it on each side. <coughs> And then I'm going to change the color of the background for each of these. So instead of using purple, I'm going to change this one to blue. And then I'm going to change this one to maybe more of a red. There we go. It looks nice. And I'm going to update this. Refresh. 
And there we go. We created three blurbs and completely kind of transformed um, the idea of the blurb into this boxed element um, with varying background colors. And it's really looking uh, really cool. And so that's, that's a few examples of using um, the advanced design settings. Now, next I'd like to delve into the custom CSS, which is the next box there, like I said. This is if you are happen to be a web developer that has uh, familiar, familiarity with CSS and you can you know, code yourself. Well, you might actually find it faster to just you know, code those changes yourself instead of using the advanced design settings. So there's lots of stuff you can do there. For example, I might make the, I might want to adjust the font size of the blurb title myself with CSS, in which case I wouldn't need to use, you know, these settings. I could come in here, go to the custom CSS, find the blurb title and just type in some CSS. Might do font size, 40 pixels. <clears throat> and then maybe do some letter spacing as well. Wait for it to load, and then I'm going to refresh and take a look at our changes. As you can see, my um, custom CSS has taken effect. It's made the uh, text bigger and the letter spacing bigger. So what's, what's so great about this is you can target custom CSS just to individual elements on the page and even on individual modules. When before, with any other theme or with the Divi prior to Divi 2.4, you would have to create a whole child theme just to um, add the CSS, and you'd also have to add that CSS to every single page in your site, because um, even though you're using it only on one page, that style sheet's loaded everywhere. So the custom CSS settings give you so much control. And when combined with the Divi library, um, these settings become even more powerful. So now that I've created this, this custom um, kind of look and a custom unit of, of blurbs and spent a lot of time doing that, um, this is the perfect oppor opportunity for me to save this whole row to the library and then later on down the road if I ever want to kind of achieve this look again there's no reason for me to um, apply all those settings and kind of start from scratch I can just uh, load that from the library so let me do that um, I'm going to open up this row I'm going to save it to the library I'm going to call it blurbs made of blocks so I can remember it and I'm gonna save that. And now if I ever want to use that again, I can um, click Add from Library and find that Blur's made of blocks and add it. And I'm all ready to go. So you can see that this uh, blurbs, these blurbs have been uh, duplicated now. Yep, so that's a basic overview of the advanced design settings and CSS settings and just how they differ from the general settings. Um, like I said, gener generally everything you need um, to achieve awesome Divi layouts is already in the general settings. But if you want to kind of put in the time and really go above and beyond and make some really interesting, unique layouts uh, for yourself or for your clients, then you can you know delve into the advanced design settings and even the custom CSS settings. And I think when you start doing that um, and even combining it with the library, as I've just shown you, you're, gonna, you're gonna just going to save yourself uh, so much time <laughs> and you're gonna be developing these, these sites for your clients so much faster. And yeah, that's a basic overview of the advanced design settings.